the atmosphere that they've created here is such an incredible team ambiance, an incredible team environment, to the point that even on those days off when they had their families visit them, the players all just wanted to hang out together. I had it kind of annoyed some of the wives yeah. and girlfriends. And I thought that was remarkable because, you know, we, we were asked to choose the outstanding player from Italy. I really struggled to pick out one guy. Like, I think it's really difficult. At different yeah, moments, yeah, yeah, you could yeah, say yeah. Bonucci, right. you could say Chiesa, mm. you could say Donnarumma, yeah. you could say Chiellini, you could say Jorginho. Um, and I think that's, that's interesting. And where I'm going with this is we knew Mancini is a good tactical manager. His rep, and if you listen to people at Manchester City, especially those people in the Manchester City press office who like to tell you behind the scenes stuff, you would think that he was a spawn of Satan when he was there, right? <laughs> uh, Robbo, do you think from the outside, is it an evolution in man management? Has Mancini grown? Can you still grow in, you know, from the time, from, from, from what he is now when he's 56, 55? But don't forget it's different to have a national team when you see the players more sporadically than a club team where you're there all the time and you see the same people every day for the whole season, just before Robo answers. Yeah, Robert, is, it, is this a big deal? Yes, I think, you, I think as a manager, you can develop, but you can become a better man manager. And it's also the people, and you just mentioned Viali, the people underneath him. You know, as Steve McLaren always talked about his time at Manchester United, it wasn't so much about managing the players, it was about, or coaching the players, it was also about managing the manager, making sure he doesn't upset the players and you have to get be the link between the manager and the players. And that's what I'm sure Viali and the other coaching staff have done very well for Mancini. But Mancini has done everything right. He's built a, a side from nothing, really. Italy were going nowhere. In 2018, I looked at their players and thought, they're not, they haven't are not. got a great set of players. How are they going to develop? He's developed them as a team. And uh, Jules talked about it earlier. They've got a game plan that they know and like. And the different personnel come in and play it very well. And he's also got that camaraderie. And I think you've also got, in Chiellini, one of the inspirational players that's ever been. You know, his leadership, he's the way he's always got a smile on his face, the way he gets around other players when, when the goalkeeper makes a save, he's banging him on the chest. If a fullback makes a tackle, he's running over and patting him on the head. That inspires people. Chiellini and Bonucci have been brilliant. Yeah, and I'm holding my hands up here officially. As you know, I, I did not expect Bonucci and Chiellini. I was sure that one was going to get hurt, the other one was going to sent off, they're yeah. going to do something silly. I mean, certainly you look at Chiellini's horse collar tackle on, on, on Saka. Saka. You know, did it remind you of like, you know, when you're in the playground yeah, and there's a little kid running away and like, you know, one of the and parents just big, grabs him, yeah, you, you know, from behind. Exactly. Um, but two I, things here. Sorry, yeah. One, team spirit wins you trophies or certainly helps you going far. And we saw it with England who have a very good togetherness and team spirit that Saka has built. And that's one of the credit we will talk later about Saka, but that's one of the good things he's done. Denmark had the same and you could go to Croatia in 2018 had the same you, you need talent on the pitch as well but I think that team spirit is a big part of it and then and we've said it on the show before and I'm going to repeat it again I never ever want anyone to tell me again that you cannot have an identity as a, as a national team which is something that comes back all the time oh they don't even have, even have time to uh, they don't have enough time to work together so you can't have a DNA at the national team it's not like a club what Mancini has done with his team is being like a club he's it playing like a team club He's having the team spirit of a team club. He's having the organization of a team club. So please, never again the like or, or no. International football is too hard to have an identity, a style of well, it's a certainly style of more playing. Well, I think it's more difficult. But what is more remarkable here, and I agree with but you. But he's Jules, done it. So, you know, a no, lot of people can do it. Well, but the thing is, is, being first. The thing is, it's not just that they have an identity. It's that they have an identity which goes against a hundred years oh, yeah, of the Italian an, an national team. Of course. That, I mean, that, that to me, Robbo, is the really remarkable part here. You watch them play. They're trying to play like a Manchester City, like a Bayern Munich with generally worse mm. players. Like they're trying Spain. to, to or, 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 or like a Spain, yeah, with less gifted players. You can say they're playing to their strength because the gifted players they have are midfield, whatever. But, you know, man for man, this is what it is. And this runs completely counter except maybe there was a period with Prandelli where they tried to do that. Mm. Although, again, that was different. They had better strikers. I, you had Balotelli in his prime, who you know, was devastating at the time. But I, this is what I find so remarkable. And it's now 34 games un, unbeaten, playing this way, being courageous, taking the game to the opposition. I, Robert, you know how important culture and what people are used to is. I, what do you make of it? 
I, 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 all I can say, he's done a brilliant job. And I, he, he went, when he went in, he said, this is the way I'm going to play. This is how we're going to play as a, as a national team. Where it's almost a, a back four, but it's a back three with our wing back getting forward down the left-hand side. It means we can get the best out of Insignia coming in field. We're going to play with somebody high and wide on the right-hand side so we can switch the play out there. We've got to try and dominate midfield. That's why I'm going to play with the likes of Jorginho. And although Verratti's a very similar player, the two of those are going to play together. Barella, who's, who's developed and developed, is the sort of player that can make those forward runs. And when that doesn't happen, as you mentioned earlier, Cristanti, we're bringing him on. And who would say Cristanti is a forward-running midfield player? That's how he, not how he plays for Roma, but he was able to fit into the system because Mancini's done it day in, day out, and every player in the team knows what his job is in that formation. And that's been the brilliant thing for me about, Man, uh, about uh, Mancini and Italy. And that's why I was so, so desperate for them to do well in this tournament. Before the tournament, you know when we talked about favourites and everything and we went through all the teams and stuff. And I said to you about Italy, I did think that not having a really good striker, because we all like Immobile and yes, in Serie A, he's had some amazing season. He's, he's scored more than what, 25 goals in the last five seasons. So he's, yeah. he's a great striker. But but in this competition, he wasn't. You know, I don't I don't care about the goals he scored in group stages against Turkey and Wales or whatever. Mm. But for, for Italy to go and win this competition without a striker, France did it in '98. With no, you know, we had Givash and Dugarry, and they were not good. But Arguably, to find, they did it. France did it in 2018 too. So. Oh, come on! Ah, yeah. But but to the point of finding other ways of scoring, yeah. whether that's Barella, whether that's Chiesa, whether that's a set piece like in the final, whether that's. Um, the Chiesa goal in the semi-final against Spain where you play on the counter and he gets the ball and then it's on his own individual brilliance. I think in itself, that's a skill. Because if you have a Hurricane or Lukaku who's going to score you guaranteed or even Cristiano five goals a tournament, at least you don't have to worry about that because you know that if you create the chances I, and you serve them, they're going to score. Now, Mancini almost had to say, OK, Immobile, we were hoping for a great tournament for him. It's not there. Let's, we have to find other ways of scoring, otherwise we're not going to go and win it. And they did. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.